And we are live. Welcome to Breathe Life Ministries expert interview. And we are sitting here today with Drs. Carol and Gerald Irvin. And we are going to talk about marriage. And I am really excited about this particular interview. Um, marriage is near and dear to my heart for many reasons. And today we're just going to let the Lord lead and glean from the wisdom of Drs. Carol and Gerald Urban. And you both have been married now for 21 years. That is awesome. Let me ask you a question. Where did you two first meet? Well, we first met at her house. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that happen? Well, I was invited to come and um, audition to sing in the gospel group. Oh, yeah. Awesome. A young gentleman brought us. Uh, we happened to finally know that we knew the same person, mm -hmm. but okay. he, he didn't know it. Mm -hmm. and so when I came, I was trying to act like I couldn't sing. You know, <laughs> you know, see that smile she got? That's, that's the smile that got me. You know? <laughs> she was like, come on in, you know? I, so I was singing in Z natural, trying to act like I couldn't sing. <laughs> she said, well, welcome to the group. You can't be here. <laughs> so, and so we were um, worshiping. Uh, we had a group of eight, but then God trickled it down to her and I. Okay. And, so we were uh, ministering, we was worshiping at different churches, and then we came together. I was playing drums and she played piano. And oh, I love it. Yeah, and so we were friends for, for two years. Yeah. Okay. And we, um, everybody where we went, everybody was like, that's your wife. I said, no, it's not. We're not married, we're friends. <laughs> and like, oh, that's, that's your wife. God gave you her, that's your wife. And vice versa, they would tell her the same thing. Oh my goodness. So one day I proposed to her. Oh. Uh, on Mother's Day. Isn't that something? Oh, I love that. She I love me. that. I was joking, but right. I, I had a card. I drew a ring on it and a rose. And I said, Happy Mother's Day. And it said, Would you marry me? And she looked at the card. Yeah. Okay. And so I came back into the room and tapped on the shoulder, got on one knee, got the rose in the hand and say, Will you marry me? Then I pop the ring open and she like, oh, oh. <gasps> kind of speeches for a minute. Cause she, yeah. Oh, I was joking, but then when she saw the ring, she was like, oh my God. <laughs> and after that's that, true. that's history. We've been married for 21 years. I love it. What a beautiful, beautiful story. Worship brought the two of you together. Yeah. It became a friendship that just naturally blossomed into your marriage that's right yes that that is beautiful that is beautiful so what is your favorite memory from the 21 years you two have been together wow we have so many <laughs> <laughs> um i would just say just you know um just performing on the stage together that would be oh. Yeah, that's true. And then when she said that, that reminds me when we sung to each other when we got married. Yeah. Oh, what song did you two sing? It was a song by uh, Rochelle Pharrell and Will Downing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Was nothing, was nothing, else, this nothing ever felt this good. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's great. That is great. What would you say? is one of the key characteristics that defines your relationship together well putting god first mm -hmm. there you go yeah. putting god first you know we wouldn't be together if it hadn't been for god mm -hmm. right yeah very very true yeah. very true and knowing your purpose you know i would say knowing your purpose you know what what are we doing together? What, um, this road, we're traveling together. You know, where are we going? What, what, what are we doing? So purpose is important. So purpose, priority. Yeah. So you've got your priorities focused 
on God, which that is this. And how does that keeping that how when you are focusing on Christ and on your relationship to him? Um, what do you see flow out of that priority, keeping it in that direction? Um, maybe another way for me to ask it is, what does that mean to you? Well, being honest, you know, being real and being honest, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you just have to be able to take the bitter with the sweet. <laughs> yes. You know, so, cause you know, the vow said until uh, death do you part, mm -hmm. Yes. you know, so when you're going through those moments of hard times, you ain't nobody perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your moments and uh, you pray, you know, you seek God and, and don't let the anger take you to another direction. You know, yeah. we, we must admit to ourselves when we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. And, um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Carol. And how, how you handle, uh, you know, differing opinions. <sighs> Very that's, good. That's what, there's a way to, uh, you know, cause so many people have trouble in that area. You know, um, you know, and they have to realize that, you know, you're both going to have differing opinions, but how do you translate those different opinions? And how do you come to some form of uh, compromise in your, in your um, discussions and your, your, your disagreements that you may have? Somebody may mm -hmm. see something one way and you see something another way. So how do you deal with that? I think that's very good. Right, Lear learning to respect each other's opinion. You know, we have yes. e exactly. each one of us have, uh, you know, our way of thinking, a way of doing things. But when you be together, you learn each other and then you don't try to go headstrong with something, you know, because someone want to be right, right all the time. Ain't nobody right all the time. Right. right. Yeah, because we're human and humans are what is it that that the Apostle Paul says, you know, we've all sinned. We all fall short and um oh goodness looks like uh oh nope sorry about that i, I thought we had comments but not yet um we we all fall short mm -hmm. so we're going to make those mistakes and as you were pointing out too carol that we see things differently exactly. and and then uh uh, Gerald, you mentioned respect. Yeah. So when we are in a marriage and we see things from different viewpoints. Uh -huh. Correct. Um, it's okay. Uh -huh. It doesn't necessarily mean anyone's wrong. Right. It just means we're two people looking at something from different angles. So you mentioned earlier, uh, Gerald, on um, uh, communication. Mm -hmm. This would be a point to talk about here because when we're seeing things from different perspectives, right. communication plays a large role. Let talk about that a little bit. Well, you you know you have to uh, when you're dealing with different situations. You know you can't be talking above someone. You have to talk with each other, not at, you know, like arguing and fussing and fighting. How can you communicate when both of you all are, you know, chatter, chatter. Right. You know, so you have to learn to, to listen. Yes. You know, and listen and then give a response, uh -huh. you know, and then the, and same with the other person, you know, you have to learn how to communicate how each other feelings are, you know, how to uh, respect each other, how to talk to each other. You know, because sometimes mm -hmm. in a relationship, somebody always want to be right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And learning to, I think one area that I've seen in relationships is that it, there's something about uh, people that wants to come in and say if you don't see it my way then you're not respecting me right. but that's not necessarily true exactly. 
So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, coming, when was this circumstance when you two, like I bet when you're doing music, you each see things a little differently at times, right? When you're talking about the arrangement. So how do you work together on that? Well, what we do, we uh, listen to what is being presented. Uh -huh. so, and then you may say, well, I don't know. I don't go with that. Uh -huh. so you say, well, what do you think? And you have to like, explain what you think, make sure you get the clarification about how you feel about this particular piece we're talking about. Right. And then we'll go over it and see how it sounds. We'll try it. And if it don't sound good, I'm like, okay, well, let's try something else. Right. So you have to come together, you know, your decision making. You just can't say, well, I ain't doing it. I'm, I, it was my idea. You know, no, if, if God have given you both, uh, as I say, the uh, wisdom and knowledge to to do his will, then you have to come together and do God's will, not yours, because mm -hmm. your, your will is not the correct will because it's not God's will. Right. Being in any in, in a relationship, you know, like I say, God have to be in your relationship. You have to know when to fold it. You can't just continue to just I'm right. You're wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. You know, and that it would never happen, never help because you're still at square one, you know, you're trying to get ahead, ahead of that the, mm -hmm. uh, conversation and you're trying to relate to each other knowing, okay, well, let me hear what you got. Yeah. And if, if mine don't sound good, I'm like, okay, well, we'll go with yours. Right. You know, so. you know I, it's so interesting. Um, when I, you know, I, when I think about my relationship with my husband, um, there are times, cause he doesn't, he's more of an introvert. I, I am too, but my introvert nature is different than his. He's more of a classic introvert where he's very quiet. Um, and if I don't really make uh, concentrated effort, I can just talk over the top of him because he's naturally more quiet than I am. But when I choose to just lay back and I go, okay, I'm just going to listen. He comes up with the most amazing things. You know, it's like, how much do we miss in a relationship when we don't take the time to be humble and quiet and just hear? Yeah. yeah, you know, and we have to uh, kind of think of it too, uh, in terms of the body of Christ. Okay? Yes, but we're all part of one body. We're all many members, you know, but one body. So mm -hmm. how does that one body uh, deal with the different? thoughts because everybody's thought processes are different everybody thinks about things differently everybody has a different approach from, uh to things um and so the different backgrounds of everyone so mm -hmm. how does all of these different members become one body to have one mind and be on one accord because you got to think about it like okay how does that happen to be on one accord when everybody has different opinions you mean you mean the body of Christ is very big. So how can we be one body, yet many members? Mm -hmm. So we have to realize that uh, in the same thing in marriage, we, we can apply that as well, because you have the, the husband and the wife with the differing opinions or the mm -hmm. different processes um, based on how they were raised, um, you know, um, their life experiences, but yet we're supposed to be one. Right. Not to, you know, we're, we're, we're one. So, so how does that happen? Okay. We, we know that the arm can't do without the hands, the, the hands can't do without the fingers, the, the, uh, uh, body can't do without the head, you know, so forth and so on. So we all have the, all of those different parts of the body may have a different function, but we mm -hmm. all come together to be as one in the body of Christ. So we have to put that into um, action in the marriage. 
Right. How we can be one in one one in our decision making, even though we have different opinions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, when you really and you think about it, the mind is the control of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Mind and your heart have to be on one accord. Right. You know, you can't have a, a thinking one way and then your heart is another way. Mm -hmm. You have to come together with all of that. You know, yeah. you, you get angry and then you think about something else and you, you're not focusing on the, the main point. See, the mm -hmm. main point, you know, like uh, Dr. Carroll say, we all are one. Mm -hmm. When yeah. we come together in marriage, we all are one. Yeah. Yeah. So we're walking together. We're living together. We're, we're sharing everything together. It's no more, uh, this is mine or that's yours. <sighs> that creates uh, uh, a division. You yes. Know, you have to understand that it, when you say, I do, that means you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming together and you're going to make sure that whatever it takes, you're going to make sure you got to make it work. You know, you can't allow the outside to come on the inside. Yes. When I say that, that means the outside friends, the outside family, the outside whatever, you know, it, it's within the house, you know, and God is within there. So when there's something wrong, if you can't get it right, right then, take a moment, pause. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it and like you say, go back and pray, you know, and say, God, you maybe I messed up. Let me go back and get this right. So you have to own up to it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems as though I keep thinking of certain elements as you're talking. I'm, I think about humility that well, and that goes back to what you were talking about earlier about putting God first. The other element that comes to my mind is where Jesus talks about dying to yourself. Yeah. Um, and when you die, you live. That's right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we're in a relationship with our spouse, we actually, if we try to force our way, we're actually doing the opposite of what we want to accomplish, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, getting yourself in alignment with God. Mm -hmm. you know, Lord, I need to understand how I can make it right. Don't say, well, how she can make it right, <laughs> how I can make it right. You know, and now if she's not in agreement, you know, you got to pray about it and say, okay, well, you know, I thought about it and I, I took my time to really think about, well, I, maybe I said something that wasn't right. Can you help me with this? Mm. In return, she can't. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right, not, right. It's not going to work, you know? Right. So we both individually have to look at ourselves and say, what did we do wrong? Mm -hmm. Correct this, you know? And it works out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love this. This is awesome. I'm going to take a quick moment, just see if we've got any comments going here. Um, let's see. And let me just take a quick look here. Ah, we do. We've got some folks watching. No, and we're just uh, seeing a God bless you here. Mm -hmm. And this is good. This is really good. So no comments or questions yet, but I've got it up so that if they come in, I can see them. So please do leave your comments. And folks, go ahead and share this video so that others can benefit from this wisdom. I've got a quick question here. If when... Uh, when you're coming and you're talking with someone who's just getting ready to get married, what is your number one concern for that couple? Well, first, you know, when we come and they come to us, uh -huh. we uh, ask, you know, ask them, you know, why are you getting married? Oh, good. <laughs> So you can't just get married because uh, I feel good. That's not a good answer. Or, you know, you have to understand the reason for getting married. What is your purpose for getting married? Yeah. 
what, what is in your relationship because we have uh before we marry anybody we do counseling okay we counsel yeah. them and we uh let them know uh, get your red flags out what's gonna cause you to stumble or what's gonna no no hidden secrets because you don't want nothing to come up and uh, within the marriages that you should have spoke about during the conversation mm -hmm. So uh, when you're having a consultation, is get all your garbage out, get all your trash out, <laughs> come into a relationship clean, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have no hidden agendas. You don't want to do anything that will destroy your marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what is, I, I love that question that you, that you, you posed at the very, beginning of, of that answer. And that was, why are you getting married? Mm -hmm. um, what are some, what are some reasons that people might get into a marriage that would be a bad foundation, a shaky foundation? Like what answer would somebody give to you when you pose that, that would give you concern? Well, sometimes when folks get to stuttering and thinking about what to say and go off into another direction from what the question was, you know that there's, I tell everybody, get your red flags and mark down your red flags. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. because there will be some red flags when you're doing a consultation. You know? Yeah. So you want to know the, the, you know, like, uh, I see someone says uh, that that's right. Be totally honest. You must be totally honest. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Because you know, I, I, we have seen uh, couples have gotten married, and you know, and some folks will lie. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know that they are lying because you know when the marriage go on, it don't last but maybe a year, not even that long. Oh wow. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. They, Tell everybody that when you get married, that means you done got all your party party stuff out. You done got everything that you used to do with your 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 homies or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. The relationship is about you and her or you and him. It ain't about my girlfriend. This or oh, I forgot. Yeah. You got to get all of that out. You got to let your friends know this is my husband. This is my wife, and whatever goes on in our relationship. Mm -hmm. It's, they're first right we're first you know no one comes before us but god right that's right you yeah know? yeah you have to let them know you have to be honest with yourself and your families mm -hmm. yeah yeah what um what now let's let's look at the flip side what's an answer somebody might give to that why are you getting married that would give you like yes they've got it they understand well, you want to answer that? Well, I guess, you know, um, that they understand that marriage represents uh, the relationship of Christ to the church. So mm. the key to understanding a lot of what marriage is about, the purpose of marriage and all of that is first understanding Christ's relationship to the church. Because so many times in the uh, Bible, there are, um comparisons uh to uh christ's relationship to the church a lot of times when he talked to the multitudes he spoke in parables mm -hmm. and, uh just even uh the one about the uh the marriage uh supper that was mm -hmm. going on you know it, it was relational and so mm -hmm. i think that once we you know, understand that concept that somebody has that has grasped that they can understand, you know, what their purpose uh, is going to be in the marriage, how they're going to relate to their spouse in the marriage, all of those things. So I think once they you, you know, have said, well, yeah, I understand now mm -hmm. the relationship of Christ to the church. So now I understand how I'm going to reflect that in my marriage. Right, right. And again, it, it's really interesting as I listen to both of you, it, it always goes back to that central focus, 
of two people coming together, but the unifying factor is they're both looking to Christ as their number one, as their first and foremost. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, people will, you know, sometimes a lot of folks don't go to church. Mm -hmm. they get married. Mm -hmm. You know, and they say, oh, I love him. Oh, I love her. And you say, okay, well, do you really, really, really love each other? Mm. It could be just a fantasy. Mm -hmm. It could be a, a, a thrill of a moment. Right. Because when you, you explain to them, when you're in a relationship, that's a commitment. Yes. You know, that is something that mm -hmm. you, it's a covenant between you two. It's something that can't be broken because you, put that ring on and said the ring represent, you know, it, it's there everlasting. There's no breakage in that, mm -hmm. you know, and when you're going through something, you have to know how to, uh, you know, Hey, look, like I always said, it, right. you, you, you done it own up to it. Yeah. You done yeah. It. And then, uh, even if she done it, you know, she can't, you know, we can't get on the phone. Hey, this person get on my nerve. I wish I would have never, now you are inviting yeah. the devil in your relationship. That's right. Nobody know what you are going through, but you, God and your mate. You know? Right. So you have to understand that people will give you opinions, but they don't know your, your, your lifestyle. They don't know your marriage. They don't know what's going on. They feel sorry for you because you're sighing, you're crying. You know, I'm hurt. This person did that. This person will go to that person instead of going to them and say, listen, we need to yeah. get this right. You know? Yeah. Well, and it, and it, when you're, that is a very destructive element that I don't think people, oftentimes people don't understand just how destructive it is when you're having an issue with your spouse and then you go to your friends and you start spilling it all over the place that your friends can't fix it. And and in all honesty, they're just going to make it worse. Correct. Yeah. The person that you need to be going to is your spouse. And, and then if the two of you st are struggling to get it sorted out, then go to a neutral third party that's committed to both of your well-being. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. That, and, and that could be your pastor or... Um, it could be, you know, that things are, are in a situation where you would need a, a, a marriage counselor. Right. That effect. So, um, but you need to go to, like you said, a neutral third party whose, mm -hmm. whose concern is going to be the welfare of both. Yeah. Um, I think that um, when you're dealing with uh, marriages and, and, you know, relationships like that, um, you know, there's a twofold thing. Okay. You may have people who are Christians mm -hmm. and then you have the ones who are non-Christians. They may have mm -hmm. not accepted Christ. So, so if they haven't accepted Christ in their life, you know, they're not going to understand the marriage principle of Christ to the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. They have to find another approach to, um, ministering to them. Mm -hmm. um, and to understand, uh, to understand the respect that they should have toward one another. Of course, we want to encourage anyone to come to the Lord. You know, right. faced with those situations where you have to counsel someone uh, that wants to get married, or perhaps they're already married and they are not saved. You know, you that's you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta have to ha handle that uh, in a in a in a different, different manner, um, right? Those right. who do understand uh, uh, and, and are saved um, that you, you know, kind of talk out those differences and get and, and what as long as they understand the relationship of Christ to the church, then, you, you know, it makes it a little easier for you to uh, have them to relate to one another to see where their problems lie and what they need to do to mm -hmm. fix those things. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm again, another key element that I'm hearing come out again and again is that element of understanding the bond and the relationship of Christ 
to the church. Would you talk about that? Um, uh, go go deeper on that subject. Uh, let's focus uh, focusing in on what Christ's relationship is to the church, and then. I want to dive deeper into how that relates to the marriage more specifically, but let's explore just that element of Christ to the church. Yeah, you know, because uh, we are uh, part of the kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Christ gave his life for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He sacrificed for us. Yes. So marriage is sacrificing. Mm -hmm. You know, marriage, yeah. knowing that as Christ have said, uh, the Holy Spirit, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. Marriage, it should be, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, That's so good. And, and the principles of all of that is uh, honesty, trusting, mm -hmm. faith, you know, and, and not allowing the adversary to intervene because we know the adversary is always lurking. Yeah. We know that it, it could be lurking through your family, you know, lurking through a lot of things. They, your family, why did you marry that guy? Or why did you marry her? You know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like that, you know. And like, it happens. Yeah, you know, and, and, it's, and Christ, as he go on, you know, uh, his ministry, he was saying, uh, deny yourself and follow me. Mm. Yeah. Are you willing to deny yourself and be with your wife? Uh -huh. Right. Huh? Are you willing to give all that up, what you used to do, and be with, walk with your wife? Uh -huh. You know, you can't and let other things intervene when you said out of your own mouth, I will, I do. You know, so you have to look at all of that. It means something. That's a valuable thing that God yeah. embedded in our life, you know, in our minds. You know, it is no excuse. Right. You're following the, the you know, the, the order of God, you know, yeah. really, you know, even if someone is, is not in the biblical word or not in the word, you know, it's our job right. to prepare uh, their relationship with Christ, you know, mm -hmm. you know, even though you don't know God, but here's a scripture that you need to know for yourself that, that, that uh, men you together, that keeps you together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you, you got to ask, see, the, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. So why you're not asking, you know, you have to knock on the door. You seek, seek in your relationship, seek how you can make it better. Yes. Seek how God can just continue to just uplift your spirit, you know, and make, you want to meet your relationship to be right. You want things to, to be good. You know, we're not perfect and God, and Christ know that God knows that. And we mm -hmm. should, know that. but yeah. we still got to walk in the honesty. We have uh -huh. to walk in the path of righteousness for what his name's sake, you know, and mm -hmm. in the book of Psalm 23, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, but I fear no evil. Oh, that's good. You know, we're going to go through some hard times in our life, but we should allow evil to intervene with what God has given us. Right. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Even, uh, you know, uh, Ephesians 5 and 31, uh, says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one, one flesh. flesh. You know, so it gives us the example uh, of, of Christ to the church as well. Uh, even mm -hmm. that. Um, so when we become one, and even Paul said um, uh, in verse 32 of that, well, this is a great mystery. Mm -hmm. Great mystery, meaning Christ, the, the, the Christ and the relationship to the church. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the union of a man and woman in marriage is a mystery because it conceals, uh, as in a parable, the truth about Christ and the church. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's uh, the metaphor of marriage is basically God's or, or ordaining a permanent union between his son and the church. Mm, that's powerful. That's really, really powerful. Yeah, so uh so that's uh 
So that's kind of that in a nutshell, you know, yeah, once uh, it, it leaves no excuse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we know things happen in life where, where Ooh. some things have, be, have become yeah. non-permanent because there have been situations that are just bad. Right. Um, and uh, so uh, in those cases like that, in cases of uh, divorce, uh, God understands that and God doesn't expect you to stay into something that's going to be life threatening to you. That's right. To you or the children or whomever. So wisdom has to be used in that uh, aspect. Yeah. But basically, right. the, the, the union of marriage is a permanent union. Right. You know, I. I think this is a really good segue point, and that is you're bringing out the relationship of Christ to the church being displayed mm -hmm. in the covenant of marriage. Yeah. Now, when, but you're, and you bring out the point that when abuse is taking place and it becomes a deadly place to to continue on then sometimes we are left with no choice but to end that relationship at that point it has already ceased to be a representation of christ's relationship to the church this is a very challenging area for a lot of christians a lot of Christians who believe in the sanctity of marriage, who who want, who deep in their heart, genuinely and authentically want to honor marriage, but they find themselves in a position where they're being mistreated, where their life, maybe even the lives of their children, is at risk. And certainly their emotional well-being is already at risk. Um how how would you counsel a person who is faced with this very challenging decision well one thing you you know you have to uh try to erase the fear good see the the fear locks a person into a relationship and and fear makes people think no one is listening no one's going to pay you any attention you're going to stay here and take the abuse, uh -huh. you know, because you're afraid of getting out. You're afraid, uh, well, God's going to do this, be mad at me. No, God is not going to be mad at you. Right. You know, God wants you to live. Right. God don't want you to be tortured, uh -huh. you know, yeah. abused. God don't want you to be trampled on, uh -huh. you know. So, you know, even though, you know, the Bible says God give us the power to tread over the scorpions and the serpents, that, that's the wickedness, you mm -hmm. know. People uh, trying to hurt you. Oh, God has right. given you the power to be to be an overcomer, and don't allow fear to lock you in. You know, I want you to be released from all kind of turmoil. You know, people be in a relationship that got beat, and got verbal abuse. They don't got you know afraid when they got uh, then got beat up. They're so afraid to tell somebody. You know, it's, right? I said, what happened? To you? Oh, nothing. Oh, that, but it's all in your expression, your facial expression. Mm -hmm. You know, you're tearing up, your eyes get watered. You can't hide abuse. You know, that's sin. Abuse is yeah. sin. You know, you have to open your heart up. You you don't pray. You say, God, I need you to help me get out of this. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord said, okay, stop fearing. Stop being afraid. Trust me. You know, uh, and God tells us you got to have faith in God. And God will remove you from a negative situation. Uh -huh. You know, the, by the words say, God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Yes. But love and a sound mind. You know, that's so good. We can conquer that, you know, conquer the, the abuse, conquer the fear, knowing that God loves you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you uh -huh. so that means that god will never leave you when you decide okay i'm i'm, I'm out of here come on kids let's mm -hmm. go. you can't take this anymore mm -hmm. you probably want to say you leave her here i'll kill you you're mm -hmm. gonna say all those things to try to yeah 
to himself where after he leave the house or she leave the house, they're going out and doing something else with somebody else. Right. Embedded the fear in you that you're not going to leave because mm -hmm. if I get back here, you better be here. You know, that, mm -hmm. that, that voice thing that trying to right. you, that anger, you know, that trying to scare you and then want to put hands on you and say, you heard what I said. You better not do this. I'm not. You know, then that fear, you want to continue to introduce fear into your heart. Fear right. mind. And then one day you get to praying and the Lord say, I got you. Mm. I got you. Yeah. Make yeah. make mm -hmm. that move and I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. Um, I, I like that. And mm -hmm. um, you have the uh, situation where, okay, we know that uh, marriage relationship is meant to be a permanent bond, um, you know, until death do us part. Um, we, we understand that concept, like, but like we, we were talking earlier, there's instances where mm -hmm. it just can't be right. because of abuse or something else that's devastating, that's harmful. Um, so in, in looking at that, Yes. God doesn't expect you to be the doormat for someone, whether it's male or female, because some males can be um, yep. you know, treated bad as well. Absolutely. Uh, and abused. So, um, but God doesn't expect you to uh, be the doormat for someone. Um, right. You know, I do think that, you know, counseling should be prevalent in those situations, professional counseling. Mm hmm And, um, and, and some people may be able to resolve some things through profession. Yeah. Uh, but if if not, and it, and it's worse and worse, and the person, the, I'm not going to counsel, I'm not doing this. Well, you know, okay. So in that in that instance, the that that relationship can't be a permanent permanent one. It's going to have to. Uh, it it becomes disjointed from yeah Christ, and I think that Christ never um disjoints his self away from people anyway people disjoint their self away from christ mm -hmm. yeah so he's always there like he said i'll never leave you nor forsake you but there mm -hmm. are people who forsake christ mm -hmm. there, are there you go say well you know i'm just gonna do what i want to do in this relationship and i'm gonna you know well well christ can't be connected to sin right so therefore, okay, when sin is present, what happens? Then there comes the division. Right. You no, know, uh, and then the person who's, uh, you know, not wanting to do what is right and is is in that that sin, well, sin factor, you know, yes. they become disjointed from Christ. Yes. Because, you know, and Christ won't hold the other party accountable because this is this person here and they don't want to do what's right and they're just you know creating all this havoc and stuff like that so they yeah. kind of disjoints their self away from christ but as you know dr gerald mentioned that god will hold the other party up and say i got you you can yes you can move on in your life yes and, uh, so i think um you know I, and i think that you know people shouldn't feel um what's the word i'm looking for they shouldn't feel like uh, if you've been a victim, you shouldn't continue to feel victimized. You know, you couldn't, you shouldn't be uh, continuing to feel like, well, gosh, I'm a victim. I just can't move on with my life. I'm just, a, I'm a victim for the rest right. of my life. You have to come to a point where you move on. And I think the, uh, the love of Christ allows mm -hmm. for, for you to move on in your yeah. life. Yes. And then God will, put you with that person who right. genuinely care for you because that person genuinely cares about the relationship of Christ to the church. So they're going to care for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I ran across this little, <laughs> this little thing here. This is funny. It's uh -huh. the husband who plops himself in front of the TV and orders his wife around like a slave has abandoned Christ for Archie Bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Christ bound himself with a towel and washed the disciples' feet. If yeah. a man wants to be, and this will be a man or woman, if a man yeah. wants to be a Christian husband, he must copy Jesus, not Jabba the Hutt. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
That is so, so good. That is so good. Oh, I, I think I love that. That is that is awesome. <laughs> yes, it is true. I'm, you know. So there's humility that go ahead. Hum humbleness. Okay. You, you're still uh, the way that Christ served his disciples, the way that he served his church, that 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 humble servant attitude has to be in the marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you made up some a, a great point. Humility. You know, you want your marriage to be awesome. Mm. Sometimes it's hard. You know, yeah. It's hard because if you're not on one accord, somebody mm -hmm. always want to do something different that don't match up with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Communicating part. You know, you it has to be that. You know, because if you don't communicate, then you like you said, the guy gonna hit guy or female will sit on the couch, turn on the TV, hit the remote, don't hear you, ignoring you. You know, you know, you don't even exist to them because they done took their mind off the marriage. Yeah. You know, yeah. The phone rang, ring. Okay, I'll be right there. Wait a minute, but what about us? You know, we're, yeah. we're hurting. You can't continue to put a band-aid on this relationship. Yeah. You know, we, we want to heal. We want to get it right. You know, our children are at stake with this. You know, if you have kids, mm -hmm. marriage, you know, the kids are absorbing because they're sponges. Uh -huh. They're going right. to Oh, yeah. yeah they're going to see how you're treating your, your husband or your wife. And they may grow up with that seed being planted into them. The seed mm -hmm. of division, the seed of uh, arguing, the seed of disrespect, you know, the seed right. of I don't care. You know, I do what I want to do. You know, yeah. all imparted in the kids yeah you know and they have to look at this you you created these kids together you mm -hmm. know I, she did it by herself or i'm leaving you because i can't have to, to handle these kids they're getting on my nerve you know mm -hmm. a reality that happens today you know people yeah. hey i'm tired of this marriage i want out you know but why yeah. do you, what's the reason you in the beginning you wanted this marriage but now you know you done got outside of the house you done met somebody who mm -hmm. in, in this relationship. Uh, and then after all said and done, you regret that you left your relationship because that person who you thought was better than the one you, God gave you mm -hmm. always give you a black eye, uh -huh. you know? So, yeah, yeah, so we have to look at all that, you yeah. know, is it worth uh, you leaving? Uh, do, do you, you, you know, you need counseling, you know, you need to mend mm -hmm. this relationship because it's a lot, you know, uh, that's at that state here. You got to, you got, you don't empower this relationship. You don't grew it. Then all of a sudden you're tired. You know, I, I was listening to the news and they said, well, these per these people have been married for 40 years. They're getting a divorce. <sighs> Why? You know, you've been there for 40 years. You got to rehash a relationship all over again with somebody else that may not match up with who you are, may not like your personality. They may fool you to get your money out of your pockets then say, okay, mm -hmm. see ya. And <laughs> you, know, you gotta think about all that. All these years, you don't, you don't yeah. throw it away. Now, you know, yeah. kids and got grown, kids and left the house. The rest of the time, it should be you and your mate. So yeah, you you're just get getting to the good stuff. <laughs> You know, so they, they, they you know, <clears throat> abusing each other. Oh, I'm tired of you. I don't want you no more. There's no fun. You know, I tell everybody that they say, well, what makes your relationship grow? I say, well, even though we have a lot of hats, we're still dating. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yes. You know, it's interesting. Um, uh, <laughs> one of I, I listened to an interview um, that was conducted with uh, this particular rock I legend and he and his wife have been together for like almost 50 years and they're still, you know, madly in love. And he, they were asking, asking him and I was like, I can't believe I'm getting marriage advice from this guy, <laughs> but he and his wife know what they're talking about. And he, he said exactly what you just said. 
which was they never stopped dating. And he goes, and people go, well, why do you, you know, they were asking him in this interview, you will, why, why? I mean, you've been together so long. Why would you do that? And he's like, why wouldn't I? That, <laughs> he's, why wouldn't I? <laughs> Bye, Bernie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, and it, the point was that the dating is so much of the energy. It's the fun. It's the, Intimacy. you know, the excitement. It's, it's the, the fun element really of being married. So why wouldn't you nurture that in your relationship with your spouse? What's something that you guys do that continues to keep the dating experience going? Well, you know, after we do all the stuff we done done, we sit down, we look at each other and say, well, what are we going to do today? <laughs> you know, they say, well, mm -hmm. oh, you hungry? Let's go eat. You know, and they would go out to eat. And they would guess what? We'll come back and we'll turn on the movie and sit there and watch the movie. One night we watched the movie, we both woke up. We're like, what time is it? <laughs> we sat up one night and watched movies until six in the morning. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and talking and like, oh, what time is it? Said, six o'clock, oh my God. <laughs> each other and we say okay well what we got to do <laughs> yeah i was just uh you know watching those movies that have the the episodes one episode two <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've done that too we've gotten totally stuck in it and we're like what's coming next <laughs> stop now it's like oh my god this happened oh we got to see what happens next <laughs> yeah. number seven is like, like what <laughs> Kids look at it like, mm -mm. oh, I know those binge watches. I know. Oh, we go into the movies or going out to eat or something like that, you mm -hmm. know. But of course, oh, uh, yeah, uh, COVID has stricken. Um, you know, of course, you've had to do more things at home, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes I cook, she cook, oh, uh -huh. you know, and then she'll say, What are you cooking today? Yeah. Uh, we don't eat pizza. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we have a lot of fun. You know, sometimes yeah. we have moments where, okay, well, what about this? We're like, well, I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you're not doing that? We well, you know we got this to do. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Then I said, I said, oh, you forgot we supposed to do this today. When? Today? You didn't do? It? Oh. I said, then we say, okay, let's get it done. We go in and get it done. You know, we don't, yeah. don't try to press each other, you know, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and change it a little bit. You know, when people get into a relationship where they have get married, mm -hmm. if something came up and you said, okay, I, it was my fault. I, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't take it again and pick it up and throw it back at you. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to hash that. That's supposed to be over. You ain't supposed to keep throwing right. up in your face. You know, it hurts. People got feelings, you know. Yeah. Once you say it's over, it's over. You know, you just mm -hmm. go on and do something, you know, better. You know, because like I say, we make mistakes. We do things that we're human. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're not robots. You can't pull the battery out and say, okay, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to shut you down now. <laughs> yeah. So, like I say, you have the uh, the opportunity to strengthen your marriage. You have uh, God gives you that that moment, you know, to say, okay, let's get it right. Let's check in, you know, mm -hmm. check in with each other. You know, is it something that I'm I'm lacking? What did I do? Uh, well, I didn't know I'd done that. You know, right? It may sound like it uh, to you, but maybe I I don't know. You know. You right. said it's wrong. Okay, all right. Then I said it. I'm sorry. You yeah. Know, don't hit me upside the head with a brick. <laughs> right. Right. You know. So if if a if a man or woman uh, accept when they're wrong, mm -hmm. accept it and go on. 
don't mm-hmm. elaborate on it. All you're doing is making it worse. You know, you're not trying to better it. You kind right. of make it worse. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Mm-hmm. You know, don't go to bed with that attitude. You right. Know, don't hide, don't have a hidden anger in you when you should have brought it out then. You know, so express it, get it out. Cause I, I want to live, you know, right. I wake up feeling good. Right. You know? so those right. are the things that a lot of people, you know, have to learn uh, in a right. relationship. You gotta, you gotta find the, the moments, how you can make it right. How you can, you know, keep it going, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You may say some stuff, you know, who they, they may like, Oh, did I say that? Be like an Urkel moment. Did I do that? <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Yeah, you know, so like, yeah. like I said, my wife and I, you know, we talk a lot. Some, you know, I used to have a fact of communicating, you know, because I'll just let it go and go on by it, but it's still there. Yeah, you can't just leave it there. You got to okay, let's let's get this out right now so we can go on, you know. So and that's important, right? Know? Right to have that. Um. You know what I'm seeing between the two? There's like, there's just this easiness. It's like you can slide this way and she can slide this way. And you both just sort of slide with each other very fluidly. What would you say keeps that openness? Because that's what I'm seeing. There's an openness to receive from both of you to each other. How do you keep that fluid like that? Well, you know, it's it's come natural when you be around each other for so long. Uh-huh. Yeah. You learn each other. You know, yeah. and I tell anybody, I say, in a marriage, you're going to always learn each other. There's always mm-hmm. something that you probably didn't know, but maybe something that you felt you should have known. But, hey, you don't know me. You're like, yeah. You know, I have to know you. I have to learn you. You have to learn me. You know, and the good part about it, you do know a lot about each other. Mm. But there may be a moment where you say, oh, did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did. You did. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Well, I should have told you, you know, that's my fault. I should have said right. something. Right. You know, because sometimes you get up and go do stuff and you're like, where were you? Where did you go? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got up. I went on and did this. Well, at least you could have told me. <laughs> My husband, and the, the last, the last disagreement my husband and I had was on that exact point. And it was interesting too, because, you know, that there was two things that, that, that really were like eye opening uh, in, in that, that conflict was one, you know, he assumed I knew something I didn't know. And, um, with me though, um, I, in my grumpiness over it, kind of stepped on his feelings and he needed to bring that to my attention. So what, you know, conflicts are going to happen. What, what seems to be the difference between either throwing water on that and extinguishing it or throwing gasoline on it is how open is each person to receive from the other i needed to receive from him that i was stepping on him even though maybe i was it was okay for me to be upset it wasn't okay for me to get disrespectful to him in being upset it was okay that he needed to do what he needed to do i just needed to be aware of it right so both of us yeah needed needed to receive from each other something yeah yeah Yeah. that's important yeah yeah Yeah. this is so good gosh we could sit here and talk for days on this subject i think this is what is one um i would love to hear from each of you Uh um one last question and that is what is 
one thing that people can do right now to improve their marriage? Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, agree to uh, find a better way to handle your disagreements. I think that's one key factor. Yeah. Um, agree to find a better way of handling disagreements. Um, that's good because that is such a big factor in marriage relationships. You know, um, you, we've got to come together to agree to disagree. Um, yeah. Come up with some alternative uh, alternatives uh, to both ideas because you know, maybe both ideas are important, you know, but um, what's the best solution? so that you can get the the best outcome of something and so you have to i think i would say agree to disagree how to how you're going to do that what's mm -hmm. the process and so both people have to have to agree that this is what we're going to do mm -hmm. in the case of any agreement some things you may say oh yeah i feel the same way yeah that's right okay we got this we know what to do but then in other occasions it's like well i you know i see it this way and oh, mm -hmm. i don't see I see it this way. Well, you know, no, I see it this way. Okay, so we're not going to agree on that. You got your way of how you see it, and I got my way of how I see it in this particular instance. Right. Let's let's um, you know, figure out a way how we're going to handle situations like this. Um, you obviously have your way of what you're saying, and I have my way of what I'm saying. Let's are are there some similarities in yeah. uh, you know our our different viewpoints common ground you know what are the similarities and, and yeah. so yeah, yeah common ground let's find a common ground and let's make a common ground decision very good that's excellent dr gerald <laughs> i'm enjoying this boy <laughs> <laughs> me too and, well, uh, another thing is uh being more sensitive to one another you that's know good. You everybody has feelings mm -hmm. and don't take everything personal yeah. you know because sometimes you can take stuff personal and take it the wrong way mm -hmm. you have everybody you know, number one you got feelings you know we all have feelings you you know be more sensitive to one another feelings That's good you know and if someone says something don't take it to another level Mm -hmm. Got to make sure, you know, don't just assume that's what that person's meant or felt, you know, because that those are sensitive. Those are things that will hit, you know, your mind, the heart, you know, your spirit. You have a good day, then all of a sudden, boom, your day done got shot because you're not you're not sensitive to one another feelings. You know, every man, every woman mm -hmm. has feelings, you know, just because yeah. I'm don't mean you don't have feelings just because the woman she's sensitive she do have feelings you know mm -hmm. don't step on her sleeve and don't step on his pants <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good you know what i'm hearing from both of you is take the time uh -huh. yeah. take the time yeah, yeah. It's, it's worth it. Oh, this has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, again, before we go, where can people find you? Well, we are, are on Facebook, of course, and um, uh, as Gerald Irvin and Carol, Carol Irvin. So mm -hmm. anyone can inbox us uh, mm -hmm. anytime. We will answer you back. We're very interactive on uh, the social media. So uh, they can contact us there. They okay. can send us emails if they want to. Uh, they can send it to, I'll uh, give the uh, church email, which is acclaim, A-C-C-L-A-I-M, ministries, I-N-T, at gmail.com. That's acclaim, ministries, I-N-T, at gmail.com. Perfect. And then you can see the other side of us on mm -hmm. Facebook, our radio yes. podcast, yeah. you yes. know, yes. right now, Praise Radio. Yeah. Yes, yes. With Dr. Jill and Dr. Carol. Yeah, contact us on that, um, yeah. on, those, on those pages. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, yes. 
Phenomenal. Well, we have, I have so been blessed by this conversation and I know other people are going to really be blessed and marriages are going to be blessed by your wisdom that you've provided today. So thank you so much. Look up Drs. Carol and Gerald Irving, Irvin um, at, the, at the Acclaim Ministries and at Right Now Praise Radio. You will not be disappointed. God bless everyone, and we will see you again um, at Breathe Life Ministries Expert Interview. God bless. Yes, you too. Right. Thank, Thank you. you.